brought to you by L&M Filters. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M. So good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> I swear this is the lonesomest looking ranch in the whole state of Kansas, Mr. Jones. That's no place for a man who likes company, Chester. Three days' ride from Dodge, 150 miles. It'd get me talking to myself. Now let's driven old Tub Claver a little crazy. Not so crazy, he ain't finally selling out. Yeah, let's leave him here, huh? Mm-hmm. eyes on old Tup in over a year. Now, he hasn't changed any. And that's what worries me. What do you mean? Well, I'm not sure the old man's competent when it comes to business like selling a ranch. Oh, there he is. Hey, Tup! Hello! Hello! Look at his hair. He must use it for a napkin. That's bear grease, Chester. Yeah. Looks like he ain't washed it since he was a boy. Oh, Tup, how are you, huh? Fit to fight day or night. <laughs> Hello, Tup. Well, I see you're looking sloppy as ever, Chester. I'm looking sloppy. Why, Tup, dog on your old hide. <laughs> Never mind, Chester. Well, I'd Never be mind. Well, sloppy, but... no, that's how I remember him. <laughs> Tup, uh, we've been up on the Republican River. We uh, heard that you're selling your ranch. Yeah, want to buy it? No, 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 no. We just thought we'd stop by and see how you're doing. That's oh, all. I'm doing right good, Marshal. Well, uh, why are you selling, Tup? Oh, I'm tired of being alone. Need help out here. Getting old. Yeah. How much are you asking for the place? Ten thousand. And it ain't worth a dollar more. You want it? <laughs> no, I don't want it. Uh, but have you found anybody who's interested? That's why I'm riding to Dodge next week. I'll find somebody. Well, I wish you'd come see me when you get there. Yeah. Maybe I will when I get there. You can buy me a drink, Marshal. <laughs> I'll be glad to, Tup. Well, so long. Bye, Tup. Goodbye. If the ocean was whiskey and I was a duck... I told the bottom and drink it all up. Good, Mr. Dillon, ain't that awful? Uh, he's a fine old man, Chester, for all his loose-minded ways. He's half simple. He ain't got a lick of sense. The first fellow who comes along is going to rob him blind. No, he isn't, Chester. Not if I can help it. Today, your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day, superior taste and filter. It's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M, mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L and M today. What's the first thing you notice when you light up an L and M? It's that L and M is so good to your taste. Of course, you'll like that rich taste of superior tobaccos. Then you'll notice that you enjoyed that taste with no effort on your part whatsoever. And that's because L&M is so quick on the draw. With L&M, flavor comes rich, comes clean, comes easy through the pure white L&M miracle tip. So, make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M today. L&M, mmm, 
Something so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L&M today. Yes, make today your big red letter day. And change to L&M. Sit down, sit down, my boy. Uh, no, thanks, Doc. I had enough sitting last week. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, say, that was a long ride you made. Well, we didn't accomplish much, but we saw an awful lot of country. You know, that's what I like about your job. You get paid whether you accomplish anything or not. You know, you're complaining because you can't collect money off of dead men, Doc. Oh, is that so? You, know, you talk easy, man, Dylan. <laughs> You're forgetting how you might get sick. I'm too healthy to worry about having to stay on the good side of you, you miserable old... Oh, all right, now you've done it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, yes. Now, now you're going to have to buy me a drink. <laughs> My pleasure, Doc. Uh, let's go into the long branch. Eh? <laughs> I knew if I waited long enough, some conscience-stricken heathen would come along and ask me into a bar. I don't mind, Doc. It's some poor devil you might have to operate on this afternoon that I'm worried about. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, well, now. Uh, shall we stand at the bar? Wait a minute, Doc. What? That's Tup Claver sitting over there. Oh, yes. I saw him on the street a while ago. Well, who's that with him? I don't know, man. Uh, look, Doc, order me a drink, will you? I'll be with you in just a minute. All right. I'll right out and take a look at it. All right, well... Ah, hello, Top. Oh, sit down, Marshal. Sit down. I uh, thought you were going to look me up when you got to Dodge. Oh, uh, Marshal, uh, this here's uh, Mr. Wayne Rutman. How do you do, Marshal? Mr. Rutman. He's aiming to buy my ranch. Oh, is that so? Where? Oh, yes. uh, he's from Kansas City. If he wants to see the ranch for him, we'll make a deal, though, Marshal. <laughs> well, I can understand that. You want to see the money, don't you? Well, it was your ID. Well, of course. And you will see it. Two weeks from now, I'll have it deposited in the bank here. Well, it'll only take a week to ride up and see the ranch and come back. No, I want to send for the money first. Why? I ain't going to sell without it get paid anyway. <laughs> Evidence of good faith, Tup. I want you to know I have the money and that I'm ready to buy before I look the ranch over. Yeah, don't make sense to me. Marshal, do you see anything wrong in doing it my way? Oh, I don't see it makes any difference. There you are, Tup. Uh... I'll be going now, and two weeks from today, I'll meet you at the bank. Agreed? Sure, sure, I'll be there. Good. Bye, Marshal. Bye, Mr. Rutman. Ho, oh, oh, ho, dead doe, you never know. My, 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 my. Uh, what? Ho, oh, oh, ho, dead... Uh, never mind, never mind, Marshal. Nice feller, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, where did you run into him? Well, at the hotel this morning. I told everybody I was selling my ranch, and his eyes lit up, and he bought me a drink. Oh, I got to come to town more often. When do the ladies get here, Marshal? <laughs> you never mind the ladies. <laughs> but I'm going to be rich. Fifteen thousand dollars worth. What? Yep, fifteen thousand dollars, Marshal. But you were only asking ten. Well, I told him that. But he said that he's as rich as can be and wants to do right by an old man like me. Now, ain't he a nice fellow, Marshal? Yeah, yeah, maybe. But uh, I'll be there to find out for sure. Come in. Uh, hello, Mr. Barkin. Well, come in, Marshal. What can the bank do for you today? Oh, it's been two weeks, Mr. Botkin. I told you I wanted to be here when Rutman and Tup Claver showed up. Of course, of course. But Wayne Rutman's already been here, Marshal. Oh, he has? Mm -hmm. Deposited $15,000 cash, just like that. <laughs> it's an awful lot of money. Yeah, I wish there were more businessmen like him around. Well, morning, gentlemen. Mm, here's Tup. Oh, it's you, Marshal. Hello, Tup. Oh, where's Rutman? He said he'd meet you at the stable about noon, Tup. 
He'll be ready to ride up to the ranch with you, and the money's here. Fifteen thousand. It's been deposited. I'll take your word for it, Botkin. If Rutman decides to buy, he'll give you a note for the money. All you'll have to do is come here and collect it. Well, sounds easy. Nothing to it. My, 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 my. Well, I don't see anything wrong with the deal, do you, Mr. Botkin? Certainly not. You're a lucky man, Tup. If he decides to buy, of course. Oh, he'll buy. <laughs> Place looks fine. I just got back this morning. Ah, so that's where you've been. Huh? Riding and dreaming, Marshal. Dreaming the money. <laughs> well, good luck, Tuck. Eh, there ain't no such thing, Marshal. Luck's for fools and sinners. You'll see. Oh, yes, you'll see. If the ocean was whiskey and I was a dog, I'd <laughs> Ah, hello, Kitty. Oh, Matt. <laughs> What's the matter? Did I scare you? <laughs> I guess we were concentrating pretty hard on those dresses in the window. Uh, Matt, this is Mary Emmett. Now, how do you do, Mary? Hello, Marshal. Mary's an old friend of mine. She's just passing through on her way to Denver. Oh, why don't you stay in Dodge a while, Mary? They got enough pretty girls in Denver. Kitty's told me about you, Marshal. I don't believe a word you say. Oh. Well, then I guess you really are old friends. Oh, it's been 15 years, hasn't it, Mary? Ever since New Orleans. Yeah. We were awful young men, weren't we? Well, you grew up pretty fast in that town. Oh, we sure did. Where's Chester, Matt? I'd like him to meet Mary, too. Oh, he went in the bank, Kitty. He claimed he had to change some money. Well, I wish I had some money. I'd change it right in his store. Look at that purple dress, Matt. Kitty, you've got a hundred dresses. Well, then I've lost 95 of them. The others are in rags. Well, the one you're wearing looks nice. This thing wouldn't look good on a gal from the deep piney wood. <laughs> Kitty, you haven't changed a bit. As long as I've known, you've complained about your wardrobe. <laughs> well, I'll stop one day, Mary, when I get a million dollars. Mr. Dillon! It's Chester, Matt. Oh, yeah. Well, look, I, uh, maybe, maybe I can join you two later and have a drink with you. Hope you will, Marshal. Okay, we'll do that. Bye. And they're having an awful row in the bank there. Oh, who is? Mr. Botkin and that fellow Rutman. Oh, is Rutman back? Got back this morning, he says, and he wants his money. He's decided not to buy Tops Ranch. Oh, what's the trouble? Well, Mr. Botkin says that... Well, you better ask him. There they are at the teller's window. You like keep that. quiet a minute, Rutman. Marshal Dillon, you settle this. What's the trouble, Mr. Botkin? He won't give me my money, that's the trouble. You haven't got any money here. $15,000 is all. Here's your note, Rutman. You signed it. My note? Uh, can I see it a minute, Mr. Barker? Give whatever money I have in bank to Tup Cleaver. Signed Wayne Rutman. It's impossible. Well, isn't this your writing, Rutman? Of course it is, Marshal. Tup brought it in two days ago. Two days ago? Now, that's a lie. Three days ago, I left him at his ranch 150 miles from here. Nobody could ride that in one day. Well, somebody's sure lying. He was here, and I gave him the money. Then it's up to the marshal to get it back. Right now. I'll be waiting at the Dodge house, Marshal. Mr. John. Yeah, what, Chester? I got an idea where old Tup might be at. Well, let's go find him. Make today your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day. Superior taste and filter, it's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M, mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L and M today. Talk about good taste. Well, friends, there's plenty of talk about good taste among the people who have changed to L and M cigarettes. That's because L and M is so good to your taste. And L&M is so quick on the draw. Just take an easy puff, and the flavor of a superior cigarette comes rich, comes clean, comes easy. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M today. L&M, mmm, so good to your taste. So quick on the draw. Get L&M today. Yes, make today your big red letter day, and change to L&M. Now, 
by golly, there he is, sitting right on the porch. What's he doing way out here, Chester? Well, sir, he told me he didn't like the Dodge house, and he was going to board here at the Widow Clancy's. Oh? Uh, did he mention that he'd have a shotgun across his lap? Well, now, what's he doing with that? Oh, hello, Marshal, Chester. Come set a spell. Who's the gun for, Tup? Wayne Rutman? Can't never tell, Marshal. Man carrying as much money as I am. No, sir. Uh, Rudman's kind of upset about that money, Tup. He is? Mm-hmm. He wants it back. Wants it back? Well, I don't understand, Marshal. He gave me the note. Yeah, I know. I saw it. Well, is there something wrong with it? No, Mr. Bodkin says it's in his handwriting. Well, then what's the fuss? Marshal, I don't want to do nothing illegal. You know that. You, uh, gave Rutman the deed to your ranch, didn't you? Of course I did. Why else would he be giving me that note for the money? Tup, how did you ride 150 miles in one day? Now, you ain't saying that's illegal, are you? No, it's not illegal, Tup. It's impossible. Uh, uh, Marshal, we ought to get this whole thing straightened out. I think we better, Tup. And you tell Wayne Rutman to be at the Long Branch tonight. We'll settle it there. I won't be accused of no wrongdoing, Marshal. No, no, not me. Well, there he is, Rutman. The same table where you first made the deal. You stand up on me, Marshal. You make him give me back my money. Well, evening, gentlemen. Sit down. Hello, Tub. I uh, I hear you got a complaint, Rutman. What's wrong? I changed my mind. I don't want your ranch. You don't want it. Here's the deed. Now I hand over the money. Oh, but we made a deal. I gave you the deed, and you gave me the note for the money. Well, I said I've changed my mind. No, it's too late, Rutman. You've already bought the ranch. It's yours. Fifteen thousand dollars for that place. Don't be a fool. And I didn't make you pay it, Rutman. Don't you tell me something. Tup only asked ten thousand. Now, why did you offer him fifteen? Well, I hey, uh, I'll answer that, Marshal. He wanted to make sure I wouldn't sell it to nobody else. He had it all figured out. He rode out to my ranch with me, and we made a deal. I gave him the deed, and he gave me the note. Then he said he had to go on to Hayes City and wouldn't be riding back with me. But I know that he aimed to get back here as fast as he could and draw his money out of the bank before I could get here with his note. That way, he'd have both his money and the ranch. <laughs> he'd get the ranch for free. This whole thing is ridiculous. I'm giving you back your deed, Top. You can have the ranch. I want that money. Wait a minute. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do, Rutman. Now, the ranch is only worth $10,000. Everybody knows that. So I'll buy it back for ten. What? Yep. I've got the money right here. You want it? No, I want the whole fifteen. I had to borrow ten thousand of it. I've got to return it within a week. I can't help that, Rutman. The ranch ain't worth more than ten thousand dollars, and that's all I'll pay for it. Now you can take it or leave it. Marshal, are you gonna sit there and let him cheat me out of five thousand dollars? Mr. Rutman, you don't have to sell the ranch. I've back, got you know. to return that ten thousand. There'll be trouble if I don't. Bad trouble. Now, well, there it is. Right there on the table. I'm gonna go get me a gun. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, you don't, Rutman. I'll find him when you're not around, Marshal. Hey, Rutman, look over there at that bar. You see them five fellers? What about them? They're mighty good friends of mine, and they're staying right here in town as long as I do in case of any trouble. Huh. Uh, looks to me like you're licked, Mr. Rutman. Now, you either pick up the 10000 or the deed, and you get out of here. Now. You'll hear about this, Marshal. Cheating me. I said get going, Rutman. Crooks. Well, he took the money and left the deed, Marshal. I still got my ranch and $5,000 to boot. Top. who are those friends of yours at the bar there? Oh, uh, I'm giving a party tonight, Marshal. You're invited, too. All the drinks are on me. How about why them? Well, they're just fellers I know. They live 30, 40 miles apart, all the way up to my ranch. Oh? When I rode back here to see Rutman's money like he wanted me to, 
I left a horse at each one of them fellas' places. <laughs> so that's how you made the trip in one day. Huh? A day and a night, Marshal. <laughs> you had your own Pony Express. Well, I kind of figured maybe I ought to get here before Ruckman did. Uh, you kind of figured right, Tuck. Now, Marshal, you know that I'm honest as daylight. I always have been. Of course, I do stretch the blanket a little when it's blanket stretching time. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, Tuck. Why don't we get that party going, huh? Our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. Take a tip from the L&M people, the people who have put the pleasure in the filter cigarette smoking. Take the L&M miracle tip, the tip that lets all the flavor of a superior cigarette come rich, come clean, come easy. Once you light up an L&M, you'll understand why we say they're so good to your taste, so quick on the draw. It's the pure white miracle tip that adds so much to your enjoyment. So make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Ralph Moody, Harry Bartell, Joe Duval, and Kathy Marlowe. Marley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. During the current year, Boys Clubs of America is celebrating its golden anniversary. Formed in 1906 from a nucleus of some 50 existing boys' clubs, the National Boy Guidance Organization today numbers 435 member clubs from coast to coast, serving more than 450,000 boys. This year, Boys' Club Week will again be known as Operation Juvenile Decency, stressing the theme, Prevent Juvenile Delinquency by Building Juvenile Decency. <laughs> Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. Unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobacco. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. Firm and pleasing to the lips, Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story of the Western Frontier when Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke.